Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Tonight I'm going to do a tutorial on how to get a black and white film look with your images. And I've done a couple of similar tutorials before. They've been on how to create black and white images, but not so much how to create them to look like black and white film. So I'm just going to give you a few tips and tricks today on how to do that. And it's a pretty basic tutorial. So the first thing we're going to start off with is converting the image to black and white. So the best way I like to do this is by creating a gradient map. And we just get to the adjustment layers down here and click on gradient map. And now we have to make sure that it's black and white. So I usually just use the first uh, preset that is in Photoshop. So just the black and white one. Uh, but you can use any one that you want. Uh, obviously some of these gradient maps are going to be not really to your liking if you want a black and white image, but as long as it's kind of a black and a grey white colour, then you should get a similar effect. So with these little sliders here, we can move them along to make it darker and to make it brighter. And then we have the mid-tones in here. So I like to make my images not too contrasty when I'm going for a black and white film look. So I usually like to just up the brightness a little bit. I like my highlights kind of at a good sort of um, amount. And then I'll just move the mid-tones a little bit just to kind of flatten the lighting a little bit, not make it look so contrasty. And then I'm going to press OK. And we're going to go to our layers here and then we're going to go and click on curves. Now this will be really just the main point where it turns it into more of a film effect. So we're going to up the shadows just at the end here. We're going to make that go up a lot higher. So already you're getting more of a faded look with the image. And we're going to bring the highlights down just a little bit. And just to add a little bit more contrast, we're going to just move a couple of points around here and here just to give it a little bit more contrast but not too much so I'm just going to play around with a couple of little points here and move that up maybe even just a little bit further here I think the most important part of it will be the shadows so just making sure you bring them up a little bit so they look a little bit more flat and a little bit faded almost Alright, so if I go to my history tab and I'll take a snapshot and already you can see what that's done. So already it kind of has that vintage effect, but I'll also just hide curves for a second and I'll show you what that's done. So whereas it was quite contrasted before by adding the curves layer and bringing the shadows up, we've given it more of a film effect. So a lot of film photography, black and white film photography, will have that faded look in black and white photos. And a lot of the time that's due to the grain as well. So if I'm going for a film look, I usually always add a grain. Uh, so that would be my third tip here. And I'm going to create the grain by just duplicating the background layer. And then I'm going to go filter, noise, add noise. And then I'm going to bring it up just a little bit higher to around 21. And we'll press OK. And I'll just zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit more. So already that's given it like a pretty detailed film grain. But we're going to go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And I always like to blur my grain out just a little bit to give it a really soft effect. Just to make it not look too um, dotty, I suppose, <laughs> uh, if that's a word. So I'm just going to blur it at one pixel and press OK. And then I'll just probably put the opacity down a little bit more on it, maybe to about... 70 might be good if we want a really grainy look so you can adjust that as much as you like if that's the effect you're going for um, or not it doesn't matter but yeah that's basically how I would do a black and white film look so I'll do a before and after so this is the before and that's the after and I'm going to zoom right in so you can see so before and after so it's definitely given it a more grainier look and just a little bit more of a vintage look and I love applying this effect with a lot of my photos so I really hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial and usually I would do just a little bit of extra dodging and burning uh, in certain places probably on the skin tone um, but for this particular photo I just want to keep it really soft and grainy and yeah that's pretty much the finished product so I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and if you'd like to see more tutorials like this one please let me know uh, if you have any requests, please let me know also because I'm always looking at doing different requests and always up for new ideas. 
Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.